guys, Garrett here from iOS Pro today. Apple has released iOS 16 Beta 1 to all developers today. Came about 2 gigabytes on my iPhone 1 Pro Max. On my iPhone 12 Pro Max and installed it. But due to the new changes in the back section of iOS 16, I, I am unable to read build number on the camera like I could before. So I'll do it here. The build number is 20A5283P. So here it is right here. And there are a lot of changes for iOS and iPadOS on a cover today. So let's get started. So before I get started, I just want to say that six Apple devices lost their support today, unfortunately, which is the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus SE first gen, iPhone 7, 7 Plus, and iPod Touch 7 due to performance issues, but my iPod Touch 7 with my favorite device out of all of them, used it every single day since 2019, worked like a charm, it did. But it was struggling to open social media apps, so that's why Apple might have dropped support for these due to performance issues. Not chip or RAM, but performance. Okay, so first up, the lock screen. So I have my iPhone 11 Pro Max running iOS 15, 12 Pro Max on iOS 16, and the lock screen has been completely revamped. Previously, if you tapped and hold, it would activate a live wallpaper. But now if you tap and hold, it'll go out just like on the Apple Watch. See, when I tap and hold, the Apple Watch goes out and I can select my watch faces. Just like that. Now the iPhone can do that same thing. So basically what Apple's have done, Apple has done is removed all the wallpapers from iOS 15 and added a whole series of new ones, like featured, like all these ones right here. So basically, they have some of the watch faces from Apple Watch, like Unity, which is right here. And I like the new emoji face, so I could tap here. I can even tap up here and choose my font color. So I could choose and change the font. But previously, you had the jailbreak and use a font tool in order to change the font on lock screen. You see, I could change it just like that. So that is really cool. I like this font right here, right here. I can even change the color of it right here. For this demo, I'm gonna use the purplish pinkish one for this demo. Not gonna leave it forever, but that's just what it's gonna be. And I can add widgets to my lock screen, including my battery right here and battery status, just like that. So it's just like Apple Watch where you can add widgets. I can even swipe between different wallpapers from the flowers wallpaper. Go down here and choose the color of the background. I can choose right here. And I can even add emojis just like that. So revamp the lock screen everywhere. But if you use the earth here, so if you use the earth, like if I just tap, hold, go back to earth, you can see when I unlock astronomy, I can go out and in earth animates like this. Just like that. You can even see the arm of the Milky Way galaxy right going behind the earth. That's a really nice attention to detail, like 100%. So that is the new lock screen. Okay, next up, the home screen. So the home screen has gone a new change as well. So previously you access spotlight, you pull down. But now there's a little button down here to access it. So I have to put my finger over it due to privacy reasons and personal info. But you can see the new spotlight search down here instead of up the top, so that's really cool. Next up, control center. So the control center has received a few little tweaks here and there. Like when you're connecting AirPods, you now get this headphone icon instead of just seeing the little AirPlay icon all the time. That's a really nice little touch here. And down at the bottom, the TV little icon has been turned gray instead of both white. Nice little touch. It's been like that icon since I was 12, I think. And we now have quick note for iPhone. See a quick note just popped up and I can make a note. The last thing for control center is when I go into maps or use location services here, previously if you pull down, it'll just show the little location icon. But now if we pull down, it'll show this. Just like it says camera recently opened, it'll show astronomy and maps using location. But if I tap in now, it will show you that astronomy location recently and maps as of right now. So you could tap into those little icon locations up here and see which, which apps are actually doing it, like using the location. That's a nice little touch. Okay, so in the settings app, there are a the bunch of new changes. Like previously, when you connected your AirPods, it wouldn't show anything. But now to the talk setting, a shortcut for AirPods Max, a new icon here showing my actual AirPods. Nice touch. But for this next one, I'll have to cover it up due to privacy reasons. So, see, I covered up my family sharing here. And we got, like, family checklist right here. So, you can says, update information for each family member and review recommendations. But I'm not going to do that. Show you that due to privacy reasons. Next up, for privacy, it's better named to privacy and security. So, we've got, because 
The privacy tab originally came in iOS 6. I can actually show you that right now. So 10 years ago, we were using iOS 6 with this schematic design. So that's when we got the privacy tab and do not disturb and all that. So that was iOS 6 about 10 years ago. We all got that schematic design, but now 10 years later, we got this new design. Pretty impressive, actually. And down at the bottom here, then here's the new safety check option. So if you heard about Apple's new changes, so if you're like in a relationship, if they end that relationship, and if in the person feels uncomfortable, they can use this to use the emergency reset in order to reset everything so they cannot be tracked or managed anymore. That's basically what this does for like relationship breakups and all that. Next up, the developer mode. So in developer, you see you got a new developer mode. It says here, if you're developing apps for Apple products, Developer mode allows you to use features that are required for app development. When developer mode is turned on, your device security will be reduced. So I am not going to use that due to my privacy concerns and reasons, so I'm not going to use that because I don't want to mess up my, my security stuff and all that. Next up, wallpaper. So the wallpaper has received a huge overhaul. So if you choose new wallpaper, you get all these ones right here live or dynamic but now apple's gone ahead and redesigned the tab hold on let me turn down my brightness so you can see this so apple basically redesigned the wallpaper and now you can click add new wallpaper and it'll bring up the same section as, as on the lock screen photo shuffle including emojis you can add too but i don't want to do i'm not going to show the people or the photos or photo shuffle due to privacy reasons you can even add weather like when i click weather here I can see it's now showing my live weather. So I hit done here. And now it's showing my this, the current conditions for my current location, see? With the sun and all that, that's one of Apple's new big features of the wallpaper section. So remove them all and now you can choose whatever you want now. It's sad to see wallpapers go, but I think it was worth it. Next up, FaceTime. So in FaceTime now, we got a new option for live captions beta. So basically it says here, let everyone on your calls know their speech is being accurately transcribed. Kind of like the voicemail was transcription, or I meant voicemail I meant, where you can see, read what it says without listening to it. And all audio is processed on device. Accurate, accuracy of live captions may vary and should not rely upon in high risk situations. Live captions use the additional battery. So basically what this does is, if you're deaf or cannot hear the other person, you can switch it on and read captions instead. That's basically what that does now. So, pretty interesting actually. Next up, accessibility. So accessibility has received some overhaul as well. Like, there's a new one here for Apple Watch mirroring. So basically what this means is, Apple Watch mirroring allows sharing and control of your Apple Watch screen from your, your paired phone, which means, once I update my Apple Watch to Watch OS 9, also, Watch OS 9 does not support, it's not supported on the third generation Apple Watch, released 2017, but Series 4 and later is, so. Even when I switch this on here, you can see the skew, this, this little thing. So when my watch connects, I can control my watch and do everything from my phone, which is really impressive. And down at the bottom here, there's another new option for live caption beta. It says your iPhone, will, you will use on-device intelligence automatically to to automatically display captions across all apps. What this means is, if you're hard, hard of hearing or you cannot hear your phone speaker, or if your speaker is broken, I'm not sure how this works, but you can actually, it can actually put transcriptions in there for when you need it. Because as of right now, I failed some repairs on my devices, which broke the speaker. So well, this feature will be very handy for me to see what people are saying without the speaker. Now that's a really, really nice little touch here. Next up, wallet. So in the wallet settings now, down at the bottom here, there's a new one for add orders to wallet. So it says here, orders for, from participating merchants will automatically be added to wallet. So basically, if you order something, you can view the info and track it from there. No longer need Safari to track orders, which is a very nice, helpful feature. Because I have to deal with that all the time for like, if you guys are ordering something from China, and it, China does not give you a good tracking, you can use this instead, which is really helpful. Next up, Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi has received a major overhaul as well. So you can see here, there's a brand new edit button here. Because if you remember in one of my older videos, let me show you guys this. I A while ago, back in early 2022, I actually made a video called How to See List of Every Joined Wi-Fi Network Connected on iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. But now, 
you can click the edit button and see all the connected Wi-Fi you previously connected to, which is really nice. And I can tap delete. See, no networks. I can delete no networks here and delete them. So just like that, which is really helpful because this video was a temporary solution. Now Apple has its own solution now, which is to tap in the Wi-Fi settings, edit, and to see your previously known Wi-Fi, which is really nice and very helpful feature. I'll be getting this one every day. So next up, home screen tab. So on the home screen tab, you'll actually have an option to enable the show spotlight button. So the, down the bottom here, you can ha you can actually use this option to disable this button here. So when I turn this off, the button goes away. Turn it back on, the button comes back. So nice little shortcut little button there. I actually like that. So pretty interesting. So that is the settings app. Okay, next up, the home app. So previously in was 13, 14, and 15, this is what it looked like previously. When you scroll down, you see the cameras here, which is now. But now the home app is completely redesigned to show entrance, bedroom, game room, kitchen, patio, and scenes. I like this. Previously, it was all cluttered together or the name was all cut out, so I couldn't see what I was doing. So when I said game room or entrance or bedroom, see the lights turned off and on. But now I could, it's a lot easier to work from here. New interface as well it's for bedroom. When I click it, you see bedroom, 100%. The entrance, which is my life strip right over here. You see each one of them has their own little unique category now. So up at top, you can see four lights, no security alerts, and speaker than TV. They're like little shortcuts, basically. So you gotta tap in, lights off, and all that, which is really, really helpful. So brand new home app, and I like the new camera's interface. Previously, I had to scroll down to the bottom to see camera. But now it's right here. So I was 10 up to now. I had to build where you had to scroll down. I was 10 and up to now to see it. But now it's right up here with this brand new interface, which is really nice, helpful feature here. So nice new changes to the home app. Okay, next up, photos. So the other day I updated my Lone Pro Max to 15.6 to get it all ready. But here's a screenshot. You can actually tap when you tap the live ed text button. It will just come up with a link and show all the text. But now when you tap it, it actually shows the preview of the link for Apple.com and what data was taken down at the bottom, which is really nice. So when I tap in here to the June 6th day, it basically tells me I can create an event for that image, which is very helpful. And here's the link. You can, click, you can click here instead of just clicking on the little highlight, which is nice. And instead of just having the edit button here, you now have this little option here for copy, duplicate, hide, slash, and all the other, other things. Previously, you had to go to the share sheet or do that, but now it's right there. So, pretty cool. Okay, so, inside the share sheet, you can see the options button has now been made bigger up at the top here where it says one photo selected. But, and the, it's been completely redesigned with a new add quick note option. So, nice and little tweet touches here to the photos app. So, nice little touches. Okay, next up, wallet. But the bad news is I'm unable to show you it comparing to my 11 Pro Max due to privacy concerns. But up at the top here, there's a brand new button for orders. So you see when I tap into orders, I can search orders I place with participating merchants and I can add them right there for tracking and all that. A nice new wallet app. Next up, messages. So previously in messages on iOS 1.0 up to now, we couldn't undo or edit a message. But now if you, you click here, we can now undo a send or edit which is really nice because previously only social media apps have the ability to unsend like Instagram and Snapchat those, and Twitter as well. Those are the only ones who've been able to unsend. Now we can do it from here, which is really nice. So if you if you send something you don't, don't want people to see, you can just unsend it right there, which is really helpful. Like if you're trying to keep a secret, you can undo that mistake you made, which is really nice. So new messages up here. Next up, in the app drawer, sorry about that, it's just a little bit thunder outside. So next up, the audio, there's a new app for audio. Previously I had to click right here, but now it's right down the bottom, see? New option for audio, which is really nice. Next up, Memoji. So the Memoji has received a few little overhauls as well. So if you go to the note, like the nose right here, you can see previously we had three options starting with iOS 12, but now they've added like like nine new options now for nose. And if you go to headwear, you can see at the very, very bottom, they've actually added a couple new headwears, but I do not know which one that is, but 
I can't confirm it. You can see the blank, blank area is now filled in now. So, really cool. Nothing exciting there, but, you know, still pretty cool to have some brand new options. So, that is basically the Memoji options. So, last up is the iPad. So, iPad OS 16 has received a few changes, but there's only two I'm going to show in this video. First up, the brand new weather app for iPad. So, iPad has finally introduced the weather app for iPad. So, the iPad waited almost 12, waited 12 years in order to get a weather app. So, previously, Apple added the clock app for iPad in, in iOS 6. They added the clock app for iPad. In iOS 12, they added the stocks and voicemails for iPad. Now in iOS 16, they finally added the weather app. I love this weather app. No more third-party apps anymore, which is really, really nice. Okay, last up thing I want to talk about is the wallpaper. So in the wallpaper section here, unlike the iPhone, where let me show you guys here, on iOS, it gained this new redesign instead, but on iPad, it's kept the same, but with one new option for wallpapers. Apple has added the ability for you guys to download the existing wallpapers for iPad, which is a really nice touch. So except for like these certain ones right here, they allow you to download these other ones to free up space. So that's a really nice touch. Download old wallpapers from the older OSs. So they may be adding other ones in the future, but I'm not sure. But I predict that in iOS 17 next year, they're going to add the same interface they did for iPhone on the wallpaper section. Because in iOS 14, they added the app library for iPhone, but in iOS 15, they get it for iPad. So I bet you that in iOS 17, they'll add this, the iPhone interface version for iPad. So that's what I think. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked the video, give this a thumbs up. Smith video. Peace out.